Good morning, and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, 1027, I had planned to start really early this morning, I really did. But I slept in a little bit later than usual. And by the time I got that camera mount that was hanging over the, off the gantry, off, and by the time I got the spray booth off the end of the table, because I'm hoping not to have to use that for a while, I uh, got the model back on the table <laughs> and did some other stuff. Well, here we are, 10.30. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be putting our uh, A fret. <laughs> There's two A frets. Looks like a lot of railing, but it, I, uh, I measured it, oh, months ago now, just because I thought, how, do we have enough? And uh, as near as I can tell, I think I mentioned this before, there is going to be just enough, as long as I don't accidentally waste one. But if you remember I was talking about there seemed to be little extra pieces of railing on some of the other frets that we didn't use, and I was wondering about that. I was thinking, well, I guess in an emergency, a person could use use some of that, but it, it just wouldn't look right. I, I think we're going to be okay here. I think we're going to be okay. And, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of these uh, uh, fair leads that we're going to have to loop over like we did yesterday. Uh, but we did, it on, we did it on the other models, and it seemed to work out okay. Uh, or did I have the railing go on the inside or something? One of the viewers was mentioning that he thought that that railing that we put on the back here uh, should have maybe gone on the inside uh, of the of the uh, fair lead, and uh, I was wondering about that too, because it, it seemed to me it would. Thinking about it now, it might have fit better. So maybe that's what Trumpeter had in mind. Uh, okay, as for our sunrise this morning, we'll we'll do it at the end. It was a lot better than usual. Except that I haven't actually seen it for a while, and I'd forgotten how much off to the right it is coming up. In other words, to, to, to my south. And uh, I, I just caught the edge of the sun coming up. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll have the camera adjusted better tomorrow morning. It is cold outside. The snow we've got, it could be, we could have this snow all winter. It's possible. In other words, this this snow could possibly be the last snow to go when that big drift that forms in my backyard disappears. <laughs> It'll be on the bottom. Uh, anyway, uh, I was talking to my neighbor when I gave uh, Missy her her uh, her dog cookie, and what's this? A piece of a broken rubber band. How did that get in my pocket? It's all dried up and stiff. I wonder how long that's been in there. I haven't worn this shirt for a long time. Uh, this is one of the viewers was mentioning, oh, you got a new shirt. No, this is not new. It's at least 25 years old. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what are we talking about here? <laughs> Um, oh yeah, we were talking about, I went outside and talked to my neighbor, and he said, with the wind chill, it's minus 17. And it was pretty cool, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't feel minus 17, but that's what he said. Uh, now, mind you, in reality, it's, it's only, it's only minus 3.1 as far as the, as far as the thermometer is concerned. Uh, but with the wind, it, it, it we have this wind chill thing. It's sort of like a humidex. If you live in a, in a place where it, it gets very humid, you'll talk about a humidex. In other words, what, what the temperature feels like because of the humidity. Uh, well, we have the opposite here in Canada. We have the, we have the uh, wind chill. <laughs> yeah, minus 17. Um, so in other words, you don't go out in your bathing suit if you're wet. <laughs> okay, uh Let's uh, let's uh, recompose here. I uh, can't think of anything else that I uh, wanted to mention. Um, uh, the snapshots turned out really well. 
uh, I, I, I had when I did yesterday's uh, uh, box opening part two, I, I ha hadn't seen them yet, and I was quite pleased at how sharp they were. So uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll we'll be able to use those later to refer to as we're doing the submarine build, which I'm looking forward to, which is not going to start for quite a while if I keep talking here. So uh, why, why don't we just uh, recompose and uh, get ourselves some railing. For, fortunately, I do not have to paint it. It's already painted with the Steinle Res. And if I'm careful, uh, I'll have to do very little touch-up later. Um, well, we, we were going to look at the, uh, the flat clear that we put on yesterday and see how, uh, you know, if, if I can see... Uh, a shine coming from from the overhead lights so so maybe we'll do that maybe I'll just uh, uh, shove the model back out here a bit uh, there, there should be room if I'm very very careful and uh, what is the easiest way to do here should I turn it around or just shove it out and move the camera over I think I think the safest thing to do will be to just shove it out here now don't worry, it's, it's not going to go off the end of the model table. In fact, the, the, the far end of the ship now is just at the end of the model table. So I can, I can go quite a ways yet before it tips over. <laughs> okay, I'll put the camera right here and we'll take a look at our flat clear and see if we can see any uh, reflection coming from the lights which are presently right over your head. And they will reflect onto the... Shut up, Ron. Okay, we have a very strong backlighting situation going on here. And uh, I think if I... Well, I can't move the lights around. But I can slide the camera around. And, uh... Yeah. Okay, I, I think for the most part, yeah, I think for the most part the flat clear did solve the uh, reflection problem. There's, there's a little bit of lightness going on there. I don't know what that is. Um, it could be I just got stuff too thick, but I, I don't think we're going to notice anything. Um, I'm noticing a little bit something just to the left of the left fairly there. I don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's going to be okay. And I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my uh, railing from, from right here and my, work my way up to the, to the bow. Okay, just a few minutes ago I was uh, getting myself ready to nip off uh, some railing and I started to think, well, uh, maybe I should, you know, nip all of them off. And then I, you know, the, my thought, uh, train of thought, thinking sort of went back, and what, what did I do in the past? And then I uh, remembered, oh yeah, I made up a special test tube. I took two ordinary test tubes and cut the bottom off of one and then taped it together and made a, a big long test tube that, that would accommodate the railing. I thought, well, where is that test tube? So I went and I looked for it, and and here, here don't you know, there's, there's a piece of... Uh, uh, railing still in it. This this could go way back to the Bismarck, but more than likely it was maybe off the hood or something. Um, okay, so we got that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a few minutes and uh, probably take quite a few minutes and uh, just carefully cut all the railing off and save them in the test tube. And, and uh, oh, one, one nice thing now, we do have this extra piece of railing, although it is it does have a uh, different spacing. Uh, let's just, just get it out here. Yeah, you, you can see that the, the spacing for the stanchions is uh, just a little bit different. But in an emergency, the height 
appears to be exactly the same. Maybe a little bit higher. Well, maybe a little bit higher, but not very much. Maybe only a quarter of a millimeter. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be good. You know, maybe what I should do is, is keep this piece of railing separate somewhere so that I don't accidentally use it. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just, let's just keep this, keep this separate. I don't do I have to make up another test tube? I don't think so. I'll, I'll find a safe place. Now, when I ordered these test tubes from Amazon several years ago, it seems to me I ordered a hundred. And I was thinking to myself, well, what do I need a hundred test tubes for? And uh, it, it turns out that was not a mistake because I'm I think I've only got about 10 left now. I've slowly used them all up for stuff. And uh, I can't work and talk at the same time here, can I? No, this, this might not work out. I hope I'm not going to accidentally have an accident here. My mistake was, though, not that I ordered 100 but I didn't order them in glass. I got plastic. And it, I think, and I could be wrong, I can't remember actually testing it, but I think that acetone will uh, dissolve this plastic. So I should have got the glass ones. Yeah, that's going to be alright. Okay, so now we've got our Bismarck one separate here, and, uh, and I can reuse these uh, test tubes later. So, nothing lost here. Okay, I'm not going to bore you by making you watch me nip every single one of these. And there, there is going to be a lot of them. And it's, it's going to take a lot of time. And my experience is that when you're doing something repetitious over and over and over again, it's very easy to make a mistake. Because I don't know so much you get careless or, or what it is. But but it's easy to make a mistake. I've, I've uh, alluded to that in uh, down in the workshop. When I'm cutting stuff on my table saw. And I'm going to cut a whole bunch of little pieces all exactly the same. And my fingers are way too close to the blade. You know, I, I won't cut myself on the on the first cut. Or, or or even the the uh, hundredth cut maybe, but maybe on the two hundredth cut, when I've had a whole lot of practice and know what I'm doing, I might cut myself. No, I, I haven't. But I mean, uh, it it seems that that's the way it goes. That uh, I, I don't know. There, there I, I think there is a something a, a phrase something about repetitious. Uh, well, a viewer once told me what it was, the, the correct, the, uh, the, what that phrase was. Here I got some paint going on. Um, let's see if I can cut that off there without, without cutting the, uh, okay, I'm having trouble moving in here. That, that one didn't go too well. Okay, in other words, I'm going to push stop here and just go ahead and get these. It's probably going to take me quite a while because there's two of these sheets and I have to do connections on both sides of each railing and uh, as well as the ends. So, like I say, I'm, I'm just going to press stop here now and uh, we'll, we'll see you when I'm done. Now, unless I've missed one, this should be the last one. OK, 
Okay. Now let's see if we can get those carefully stuck onto the sides. And they're so hard to pick up without accidentally bending them. See if I can get them in here with the rest. Maybe it'd be easier to just get them all in all at the same time. I'll get it, don't worry. Okay. There we go. All right, let's recompose here and see if we can possibly start sticking one on. Yesterday I was sitting in front of my computer and I was checking my comments and email and in the monitor just above the computer, I noticed a rabbit suddenly run from the backyard into the front. And if you look, you're gonna see a fox hot on its tail. Run, rabbit, run. Okay, you can see right here where we have a slight problem in that the uh, foam that is acting as a bumper for when we turn the ship on its side. Now, now may maybe I, I was thinking of uh, putting this piece of foam underneath the keel and just raising everything up, but, but now that I'm looking at this, it, it could be that all I have to do is just poke this down a little bit. Um, uh, or should I just take, take break this off? It's just glued on. Uh, and then just maybe cut this down a little. Because I think what, what could happen is that when we're... Yeah, I, I think that what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take these off and re-glue them on. Um, Let's get something here that's going to have a little bit of leverage going on. I'll have to move this, I guess. My goodness, did I ever wedge that in there or what? Okay. Now, what have I got here? Okay, maybe this is overkill, but if I'm really careful, I should be able to just twist that off of there. Which way should I go, back or out? Oh my, that's, that hot glue is really, really strong. Um, okay, I'm going to have to come up with something else. Well, well, maybe the thing to do is is just raise the, uh, the ship up a bit and um, put, put this little piece of foam underneath the keel. It has to go in just right there. Now, I want to make sure, let me get this out of the way. I want to make sure that when I lift the ship up that the hoops are not going to break anything off that is going to all of a sudden raise up a little higher than it is right now. I'm just watching everything there. I don't see anything. I don't hear any snapping. Now, I think that I can put my fingers under here. Put this underneath like that. There we go. Yeah. That should be alright. Okay, I think we probably we could leave it like that too. 
Okay, now at least we can we can uh, get at this and start with our <clears throat> with our railing right here, and right off the bat we got a fair lead to deal with. Okay, let's get ourselves a piece of railing here. I don't think it matters which one. Uh, I'm just going to tip this up on end here. There we go. Okay, now we want it with the pegs up, and that's the way they are right now. All right, what? Where does this come? Okay, so we're going to have to. We're going to. I'll, I'll recompose because it's too hard for you to see there. Okay, I'm wondering now if I was to put this back in. Um, would I be able to still work properly in there? Because I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah, I, th I think that I can g actually get in there. Now, once again, I don't accidentally catch my fingers on these little barrels and break them off, but you can see here where the fair the, that fair lead is going to come. Let let's try and just nip off two of the bottom rails that are right where that fair lead is and see if maybe possibly by bending the third rail from the bottom up a little bit we can get everything to clear. That'll, that'll give this whole thing just a little bit more strength. So I'm just going to use the Tamiya nippers for that. Okay, does it look like we can get get down onto the gunnel without removing that other No it it's kinda it just barely makes it. Um I'm gonna have to uh f fix the, the railing down on, on this end here. It's it's sort of being held up by stuff, so I'm gonna have to recompose again. Okay, time is really getting on here. And I've got the other end of the railing sitting flat on the deck and it's working out a lot better now. And it looks to me like we are probably going to be able to get this onto the gunnel and have the, that rail. Oh no, I'm caught up on something again. Oh no, I flipped it right off. Uh, you know what? Does that look like it's going to do it or not? I'm going to uh, put the macro lens on here and then I'll be able to see it almost as well as you can uh, in the monitor. Now, remember I said time is moving on here. I think I'm going to call it quits for today. As for the uh, box opening number three for the U-boat, um, I think what I'm going to do is this evening maybe I will bring the boxes into the model table here and uh, I'll, I'll do it here because my lighting is a lot brighter um, and I can, uh, uh, at least that's the plan. So thanks for watching everybody and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.